Welcome back to the third episode exploring the life, legend, and influence of awesome New Yorker Washington Irving. So again, with your help, we give you the third installment of Washington Irving's Sunnyside. On our way to Sunnyside, we had to stop by Sleepy Hollow and visit the old Dutch burial ground where we can find some inspirations for some of the characters from the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Here lies Katriana Van Tessel, whose name Irving anglicized to Katrina, the love interest in the story. And here's her cousin, Eleanor Brush, who Irving purportedly based the character of Katrina on. Here is Abraham Martling, who may have inspired the character of Brom Bones, Ichabod Crane's competition for Katrina's hand in marriage. But what about Ichabod Crane? Where did the inspiration for Irving's protagonist come from? Well, as it so happens, there was a real Ichabod Crane. Colonel Ichabod B. Crane and Washington Irving both served in the War of 1812 under Governor Daniel Tompkins. So it's most likely that these two did cross paths and that Irving did use his name without the Colonel's permission. And now to Sunnyside. In 1835, Washington Irving buys a tiny two-bedroom cottage for about $1,800 after spending most of his career abroad, but he didn't move here to retire. Despite a common misconception that the father of American literature never wrote while in America, he financed much of this house and its many expansions by writing. He served as a local dignitary, sold autographs and interviews, and created a working farm, but he also wrote the massive five-volume biography, The Life of George Washington, and a fictionalized account of the house titled Wolfert's Roost while living here. And this whole concept of creating a false legend about your own home was very Washington Irving. He loved truthiness. He had his story set in almost real places. He wrote under pseudonyms like Knickerbocker, or Crayon, actually had these two characters converse together. All those discrepancies about where he lived in the city, Washington would have loved that today. You can see even on the side of Sunnyside, there's the date. 1656. The date is entirely fabricated by Washington Irving just to make his home seem older than it actually was. But within Sunnyside, there is truth. Though a lot of this was recreated, there are many items within Sunnyside that were here while Washington Irving was here that allow us to understand who this man really was. And to help us understand, we're joined today with the Director of Content Development at Historic Hudson Valley, Michael Lord. Michael, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Nathan. Sunnyside is not a traditional colonial home. He decided he wanted to take little pieces of Europe and make that into his home, Sunnyside. This was a very new cottage design, very much unlike the symmetry of a Federalist style home. Are there any elements to the house that were from the original cottage? So the two rooms here would have been part of that original cottage. These are Minton tiles. The original. Irving put these tiles in so people that walk into Sunnyside are walking on the floor that Irving would have walked. Yes. Some of the objects here in Washington Irving's study. This is the room that he did much of his writing and corresponding in. These small little uh, sort of wooden knives or letter openers as they may be, Irving picked those up in Spain when he was ambassador to Spain. And almost all the books you're looking at in here uh, are Irving's library. And the dining room's a great place for Irving because Irving was a man who loved to tell stories around a dining room table. He has friends. This is a man that has dined with Napoleon III in this house. Former President Martin Van Buren was here. There is a portrait of Washington Irving uh, that also goes back to about 1830 or thereabouts. We're in Irving's parlor, sort of his living room, family room, kind of all-purpose kind of a space. For a man like Irving, he could have afforded a much larger house, but he really wanted to keep this sort of cottage size, human sized in terms of scale. You're gonna notice a portrait from John Wesley Jarvis. The famous one. The famous portrait. He added this cast iron stove uh, in his kitchen. He had a lot more spaces to heat things up. Behind this stove, which would always be lit and always be hot, there are copper coils. And those coils would coil behind there, the water would coil behind it, heat up. And if you follow the lines up and around through the whole kitchen area, you'll see that it drops down into an iron sink. So hot and cold running water in an iron sink is a big deal for the 1830s and 40s. And we're in Irving's uh, bedchamber itself. As he got older, he became a little bit more arthritic. He had health issues towards the end. Uh, we know that he was using that cane in the later years of his life. Uh, in November of 1859, Irving was feeling very unhealthy, retired up to his bedchamber feeling fairly unwell, and suffered a heart attack on the evening of November 28, 1859, where he actually died in this room on this bed. 
His funeral was held four days later in Episcopal Church in Terrytown, and he was buried at Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Washington Irving is not only buried among his family, but his friends. Right next to his grave is buried General Henry Storms, who delivered Washington's eulogy at his funeral. And just across the street, you can find his friend William Mahler, who threw his final birthday party. If you find yourself in the New York area, be sure to come and visit Sleepy Hollow and Sunnyside. There's events that go on here all the way through Halloween, but Sunnyside can be visited and explored from May until November. HudsonValley.org. Check it out. Much thanks to our friends at Historic Hudson Valley, Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, and Reformed Church of the Tarrytowns, and you, our viewers. Thank you so much for your help and support. We really appreciate it. Unique New York with Nathan Kaufman can be as much yours as it is ours. So keep it coming.